Hi, my name is Bronson Tellis. This is the TLS 358 coaching interview. Um, I'm coach. Uh, I'm interviewing one of my fellow friends who's a coach. Um, I'll introduce you to him. Uh, so, what is your name? My name is Anton Gregorio. And what is your current or most recent coaching position? My recent position is I'm a U14 soccer coach. Nice, man. And share a bit about your coaching history and accomplishments. Yeah. So I uh, grew up in Wales. Uh, from in the UK, and I played soccer for the Cardiff City Academy. Um, I moved out to California during high school and continued my career um, at the high school and at club level. Um, and then I converted to being a coach for high school and now currently a U14 coach. Sweet, boy. And what is your favorite coaching moment or memory that you've had over the couple of years you've been coaching? Um, I'd probably say my first year as this U14 coach that I'm currently at now. Um, we went eight and three during the season and then um, made a run in the playoffs, but haven't nice. gone uh, full short. Yeah. Oh, beauty. And uh, what would you say has been the most difficult coaching moment you've had or incident you faced? Um, difficult incident was probably between um, a referee and uh, one of the parents um, of our kids, um, they got into some conflict uh, based on a couple of bad decisions that went against us. Um, and it was kind of a sticky situation I had to deal with. Oh, okay, interesting, interesting. And what potential role and impact can coaches have in young people's lives? Um, I think the impact they can have is just to be a role model, especially at that age. Um, Kids are still picking up tendencies of yeah. what parents and uh, peers are doing. So I think just being the best role model I can be when they're with me at practice is yeah. the best thing to do. No, it's so true. Right? And uh, and how has coaching changed over time, in your opinion, especially considering generational change? Um, well, looking back on when I was 14 and in, a, uh, in the Cardiff City Academy, uh, they were definitely a lot more uh, harsh on you, um, expected more things and kind of more demanding and um, you kind of felt it if you didn't do something right. Uh, whereas yeah. now I feel like everything's a bit more lenient and um, yeah, it's a bit more kind of, you bring up the participation trophies yeah. and things like that. So I think that's changed. Yeah. That's the biggest change over, oh, over no. the generation. Yeah. yeah, very, very different to decades ago yeah um what kind of relationship do you try to create with your athletes and you know why are relationships uh so important generally speaking uh it's good yeah it's it's key to have a good relationship with your players so they respect you especially being a young coach yeah. like i am um you need the respect from the kids um and it's also i try to create a i try and keep a coach player relationship but also um trying to make a relationship to where they can talk to you about anything. They don't, they feel like they can talk to you about anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's hundred percent. And, um, how would you say, how do you motivate different kind of athletes and personalities, especially, you know, 14 year olds? How do you, how do you motivate? Yeah. So the biggest thing is kind of getting to know your players in the first couple of weeks that they are with you. Um, and knowing kind of if they, um, if they take criticism, well, things like that. Um, so it's just learning about the types of players you're dealing with, and then that's how you can um, rely, relay coaching onto them. Yeah. Oh, beauty. And um, so how do you choose team captains, and what kind of roles do you see them playing in the team dynamics that you're trying to create, like the culture yeah. and everything? So the biggest thing for me is I don't just reward the best player as the captain. Um, I look to someone that's kind of motivational for those kids, um, someone that – kind of stands out from the crowd that I have and um, yeah, like kids look up to and respect um, and they'll listen when their captain is speaking, things like that. So. Nice, yeah. Okay, and how would you describe your leadership style? My leadership as a, style as, as a, a coach? coach? Yeah, as a coach, as a player, or as a um, old player, just how you go about life. I mean, how would you describe your leadership style? Uh, definitely being humble. Um, yeah, just kind of not taking anything for granted, and I try and relay that on to the kids um, that they should just be thankful for every opportunity they get um, yeah. and all things like that. Oh, 100%. And uh, in what ways does your personality impact um, the way you coach, like the good and the bad? Um, obviously, it's probably more good. Yeah. So, uh, how, would, like, how would you say your personality impacts? How you coach? Um, I like to have fun. I'm a fun person, I like to think. So yeah. um, 
I like to make training fun, especially at that age. Um, Personality-wise, how I impact them, I yeah, I'd say it's just kind of making things a lot, lot more light-hearted than it needs yeah. to be in some instances, but then also knowing when to get serious and when they need to listen to you and things oh, like nice. that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good. And um, so, sorry for the next question. How do you go about like preparing, planning, and organizing as a coach? And like, what do you think is important? Um, and this can go for you know practices, game days, yeah, anything in that. So um, I definitely think um, having a written out plan of what you want to do at practice yeah. is crucial. Um, you can't just go up there and wing it because um, then kids start to kind of question if you're if you really know what you're talking about and things like that. So definitely planning well for each practice and each game, making sure um, everyone is um, got the right equipment and ready to go on game day and things like that. Yeah, so it's a very organizational aspect. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Now, why is it critical for coaches to consider um, age, skill level, and other environmental contexts? Uh, yeah, the age and skill level uh, definitely you got to consider because you can't expect – um, things from kids at a certain age, yeah. um, from maybe from like a, a, a U18 level to a U14, there's obviously a skill level uh, difference. So it's yeah. just your expectations and um, also just understanding uh, the, these kids and how old they are. And some of them, half, half of them are not fully bought in and half of them are really bought in. So it's just yeah. kind of understanding uh, who you're dealing with. Yeah, and how to probably how to connect both. Yeah. Okay, okay yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, Next question is, how do you have positive relationships with parents, administrators, fellow coaches, and other stakeholders? So, like, in this instance, since you're, like, a U14 site coach, um, you don't really deal with the administrators, but um, what about with the parents? How do you deal with the yeah. parents? Uh, um, you, yeah, the big, the biggest thing is just keeping a healthy relationship between me and the parents. Yeah. Um, they've got to trust me as well when they're dropping their kids off at at practice for two hours, you know, yeah. um, under my supervision. Um, but also there's a fine line between, um, me be having a good relationship with them and then them also thinking they can, um, have an effect on the team or the yeah. practice and things like that, which I try to eliminate. Yeah. That's crucial. That's yeah. crucial. Especially, you know, what we've been learning in this content, you know, that's, that's very, um, yeah, that's very exaggerated and stuff. So, how can coaches influence athletes' lives outside of sports and encourage positive and pro-social behavior as well as academic and you know, professional success? Yeah, um, I think that touches on what I said earlier about trying to be a role model. Um, you've got to teach them that not everything is about the sport you're coaching them in. And it's also um, you're trying to teach them to be a better themselves, um, yeah. like a better man or woman, um, giving them, yeah, being like a role model to them, making sure that maybe asking them how their school's going, um, yeah. just checking in on them, making sure everything's okay at home and things like that. Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. And uh, how do you think you create an inclusive and safe environment for all types of athletes? Um, now this, like what we've been learning, kind of considers like race, gender, sexual orientation, religion, national origin, class, ability, and other um, sorry, markers of difference. Now how do you create an inclusive and safe environment for those like for, yeah. I guess everyone. So um, when talking about things like race and gender and uh, religion, things like that, I, I tell my kids at the start of every year that the best kids are going to play, yeah. no matter what you look like, anything like that, What yeah. if you're a, a guy or girl, um, the best kids are going to play. And uh, there's no – I try to not create any bias towards um, – any special like special treatment towards certain kids, uh, yeah. maybe their parents, uh, donors, or things like that. Just not not show any special treatment. Play the play the kids that need to be played, but also um, include everyone of and course. make sure because they're at an age where everyone still needs to be kind of uh, having game time yeah. and things like that. Active, you know? involved. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay. And why should coaches be especially knowledgeable about Title Nine? So like, I understand. You're in the select um, soccer, so you don't really deal with the school yeah. uh, school systems as well. But like Title Nine just kind of refers to you know giving like like equal play to to men and and women, and you know just kind of giving like free opportunities to all players. Yeah. So how how would you like 
why should coaches be especially knowledgeable about Title Nine? Yeah, I think they should they should be knowledgeable about uh, Title Nine because especially dealing with kids that age, um, yeah. you've got to make them all feel inclusive yeah. um, and not kind of separate the kind of the bad kids, if, yeah. if you would say. Of um, so yeah, it's just all about giving equal opportunities, um, equal not equal game time, I would say, but kind of at least getting them. Yeah. Some game time, um, whatever benefits the yeah. team. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I know you don't have to deal with Title Nine. Yeah, but I mean, mm -hmm. you've probably heard about it. And how can coaches proactively minimize liabilities and risks generally? Um, so in this in this regards, like how? What I mean by this, because I know it's it's a bit of a weird question to soccer, but um, liabilities and risks. Now, there's kind of like what people can be bringing from like. Uh, like they're home to practice. Just to say someone comes maybe from a, a bad neighbor and then he comes to practice, how can you practically minimize that kind of thing um, and how you know they rub off on the team? Yeah, I think um, just making sure everyone kind of treats each other equally, yeah. uh, like making all the players respect each other, um, not having that gap between kids that maybe are a bit more... Um, fortunate in ways and the kids that are less fortunate kind of bridging that gap uh, making making everyone feel equal yeah um and things like that yeah oh, perfect and what are some effective and ineffective approaches to disciplining players um i think it's definitely you've got to you've got to understand your players uh, yeah. like i've mentioned earlier you've got to you've got to know how they react to criticism things mm -hmm. like that um and once you've got to feel the kind of Diff how different kids work yeah. you can then kind of not discipline them but talk to them or help them yeah. or critique them in different ways so so every player is like different yeah so you, you, you've you know you now know like all you all the players and stuff yeah. so you, you know which guys know how to be yelled at some guys don't know how to be yelled at yeah. you kind of just okay yeah, the, yeah. The, the, i think the biggest thing especially at that age is just understanding the people you're working with because yeah. all kids are different and they all have different emotions and things yeah. like that. So it's just kind of yeah. understanding the players yeah. you're with. Yeah. Okay. And that kind of even goes back to like today's co coaching compared to like, you know, a couple of decades ago coaching, yeah. you know, you just kind of understanding your players a bit more. Um, now what considerations need to be in, need to be made in regards to compliance? Um, compliance meet like, so this is, I think the one in regards to like following guidelines okay so like if you had to okay oh so like when you start your season do you give them like a list of guidelines for them to follow yeah yeah so things? there'll be there'll be like a, an agreement between yeah. players and coaches um, oh, okay. of kind of what i'm expecting out of them and uh, they can also tell me what kind of they're expecting out of me for this year yeah. um and also yeah just just kind of all being on the same page of kind of following the same guidelines yeah okay. what i'm trying to what so i'm trying to accomplish meeting those expectations yeah. personally oh nice and the last question is um you know how can social media be a problem and opportunity uh, for coaches um i think this day and age there's a lot of kids who are very young that get onto social media yeah. so i think not understanding your actions on social media where everyone can see it or it's there forever. Um, yeah. It's kind of like trash talking or anything like that. Um, but also it could be a problem. Maybe they've seen a clip of a certain tackle or some someone something did like yeah. um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is a soccer player who yeah. um, like has kicked people in the past. So I don't want to bring that into my club. So yeah, of course. things they see on social media and things they can also do. Uh, but it can also be an opportunity because you so could, yeah, you could promote things. You could um, share even with people um, on social media that are part of your club. Kind of different nice. clips of, yeah. oh, look at this. This is what you did, or I'd like you to do things like that. Um, and you can also um, help players learn and be better by giving them kind of a player to go and watch. Yeah. Um, like one of my kids, I he's a winger, and I gave him. I told him to look at YouTube clips of David Beckham because yeah, that's what okay. I'm trying to model him around. And I think he's very similar to. Yeah. He has a good delivery into the box, things like that. So um, I think it's definitely good. It's beneficial for uh, coaching, especially at that age, to where they can kind of develop their skills. Yeah, nice yeah. man. Well, thank you for your interview, and uh, yeah. yeah, thank awesome. you. Cool.